And I, I, I can get a whole day out of this. Uh, if it gets to be like 80 degrees out here, which it won't. Um, it won't. <laughs> yeah, I'll have, no, well, I'll have problems. But um, I've watered, um, or I've marbled on water that was almost dark uh, brown because it was so contaminated, and it still works. Not as well, but it works. So this pattern is mostly Prussian blue. Nice big drops. stretch those out with a fairly thick needle diagonally. Back against each other. And I'm going fairly deep in the tray and that creates more current can be risky because it might keep moving after I did it. I want it to kind of stop. Slow down at the end. Now the hard part. I'm going to lay the paper down. at an angle that matches the angle of the drawn part, if I can, and I'm going to gently move it. So you can see that Prussian blue in those flowers. Oh yeah. You can imagine what it's going to be like in there. Mm -hmm. Those diagonals, light and dark, are the result of shaking it. That's called Spanishing. And that's a drawn Spanish. There's a lot of blue, so I'm going to have to rinse it. I put more blue on there than, than the paper could hold. So you, you would see this on books um, in the very early 1900s. You see it on the big books, the really big books. See, I'm hitting this with a lot of water because I've put too much paint. I love that. I got to figure it So that really has a lot of movement. They almost match. A little bit more at an angle, but that's not bad. That, that's good enough. Oh, yeah. So we get uh, one print with all that paint I threw on there. One print. And, uh, the glory of Prussian blue. Just incredibly strong. Mm, it just jumps out. Yeah, Prussian blue is... Especially with the yellow. Yeah, well that's, yeah, that's so important. This Prussian blue is very strong because it's so small and it's able to be closer together, which makes it more dense and more color. Mm -hmm. This is uh, invented, it's a synthetic color. It's invented in Berlin about 1704. Hmm. So we have examples of this from then on. Now before that, 
they would have probably have had, well, there's several different blues. This is an indigo blue here, okay? And this is a organic blue. It's made from a plant, so it's alive, right? So organic. It doesn't work in marbling unless you convert it to an inorganic. Huh. So you attach the color uh, to something that is inorganic, uh, like alum. So we attach the, the color matter to alum. And alum, well, we pickle with it. We use it as a blood, um, stop bleeding, and uh, different things like that. And that then becomes something that will stick to paper and permanently stay. Okay? So this can become a pigment for marbling with a little bit of chemistry. It takes a little bit of work. That's, and they were doing that. Um, they talk about all the different pigments that were available in the uh, 19th century. They were doing a lot with like uh, wood tannins and things like that. They would get a color out of a red wood and then make a pigment with sticking that tea. It's like tea. Oh, yeah. You know, um, for example, my teacup. If I were to take this tea, which is very small particles of color, I could throw some alum in there and make pigment, the color of that tea. And I've done it. I've done it with um, goldenrod plants before and a few other Yeah, things. goldenrod's a good one. Walnut holes. Walnut. I've tried walnut too, and it, I've never used it, but I've, I've made the pigment, but I never ground it down and, and tried it. I, I just need to do that sometime. Well, I gotta use it in dyeing clothing and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you pick up walnuts and look what happens to your hands. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. So we'll do... Oakberry, that's another one. That's true. That's right. See all that blue left over? Yep. That shows you how much extra blue that the paper didn't pick up. It's just... It can't. It can only pick up so much. Right. But that's okay, we can, we can live with it. Okay, we're going to do a French curl. Well, I mean, unless it wouldn't come out bold. That's right. Yellow ochre. It's a little contaminated blue in there. And a little bit of red iron oxide. fairly evenly distributed over the surface. Now the last color, Prussian blue, which might be a little strong for this pattern, but I don't want to dilute it because it'll dilute it for all the others, so we'll try to manage that. The yellow I'm using is not my brightest yellow. I think if I put my bright yellow in there, it would probably match the strong blue a little bit. Cool. Now 
find some paper. I don't know how to teach. Something fell in there. I saw a big hole. So we'll see. We'll dig that out and see what it is. It's, I think it was a, a leaf, a tiny leaf or something. Is that it? Classic French curl. See the hole in that lower corner? Yeah. yeah. It happens. Oh, yeah. Looks like a face. Yeah. <laughs> Careful what you see in there. Yeah, I can see the face. Yeah, it looks, <laughs> it looks good. Give that a good squirt. Clean it up. Blue is a little dense. I'm gonna have to add some water to it. I, I I made the blue extra strong in case I needed it strong, and um, I'm I've been diluting them a bit. But uh, I I could say that I'm happy with the the intensity of everybody together. I mean that's a strong yellow, strong red, strong blue. Oh yeah. So that's that's what you want. You want as strong as possible, unless you're reproducing an old pattern that says don't do that. Right? I mean, you could do what you want, but um, if you're reproducing something, you do have to tune things together to make it, to make them go together well. So that, that's nice. a French curl with a little heavy in the blue, a little large, a little too large, I think, but um, that's okay. Nice. One at a time. Uh, in Vincennes, uh, there's a, a cathedral there that has a basement full of books with that pattern on it. Hmm. I'll be in Vin, yeah, I'll be, we'll be in Vincennes in a couple of weeks. That's right. And I've been in the basement. I checked them out. And sure enough, nice. there's about that same spacing. They're all from about 1800 on. Um, nothing before then, it seemed. So will you be in Vincennes? No. I wish I could, but I just can't get out there. I'm too expensive to gas for me. So. Yeah. What's the pattern of the blue? This is a 20th century pattern called a drawn Spanish and um, it was found on large books because it's a big pattern. It looks nice. better when I have a bigger sheet. You do Lewis and Clark also don't you? Lewis yes. and Clark I will be there this year. Okay mm -hmm. good yeah because we'll be there too. Good. Yes. Nice very nice. Thank you. Look at these John. So I'm putting down a little bit of green, and I'm going to put down, um, it's going to be a very earthy, nice earthy pattern. Um, I was supposed to have been staying up there, and I got this cold again, so I didn't stay, I just stayed sick. Green. Uh, I'm going to do a lighter yellow, or yellow and lighter red, I should say. Uh, no blue in this. I don't have my orange out. I, I need an orange. I think I'll grab an orange and throw, pop it in here in a minute. That always is good. It's between the yellow and the red. It's a good transition between the two. It's beautiful to see. And um, I think, I think that's fine. Maybe, maybe I'll pop some strong red and that'll be it. I, I have two reds today. I have a, a pinkish red that's an ochre, it's French or, uh, earth, and then the strong rust, iron oxide. That's good. Okay, I'm going to stretch it. Back here in the back, it kind of looks like a bird. Stretch it again. Yeah, Sean, the girl I'm, I'm seeing, she's got 
This one I'm going to really rank it. basically had a that way. A single class with her in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And boy, she just loved it. I, well, like I, I, I did it for a prop for a show a number of years ago, and it, I mean, it, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't like this caliber, oh, but yeah. I mean, it, it turned out okay. Yeah. We were talking about that. I went out and bought him a bunch of pot scrubbers. I bought like 15 pot scrubbers. <laughs> <laughs> He goes, the best things are now, Dad, is booms. Yeah. And, that's, and I'm looking at his stuff. Around around and I can see where he's getting that front because you know, can just tap the barrel. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, yeah, you can see it's starting to move. I want it to be can, broken up and a little messed get, up, a little damaged. Nose tight. And then we're going from to. The, from the, like any shaker village. I'm great. Beautiful. Yeah, I know. I was starting to wonder a lot of things. <laughs> I thought it was supposed to be really nasty with that. Yeah, it's coming. Is it? Yeah. Seems nice now. Yeah. Well, it was cold yesterday. Man, I was cutting grass. I had two yards to cut yesterday. I was in sweats and still freezing. We're supposed to have hail and thunderstorms this afternoon. Well, you don't need to say that too loud. You know. Sorry. <laughs> don't encourage us. <laughs> I'm just day tripping. I can't stay out here. I got tomorrow. I got to go to the. Ooh, have to go to the Redbud School tomorrow. We are the 250th. We allowed the school art class to have a competition to see for a logo camp. Yeah. I didn't know you doused them that much, but. Well, um, I have to, if you're using a more modern type of marbling, with acrylics or something, it washes off the acrylics. Right. you got to be really careful. Okay. But okay. some days it does wash it off. Some but days my yellow is whoop, gone. So you never know. Mm. But yeah, that's... I've been... Uh, I raked that like what, six times, back and forth. So whenever you rake it, it tends to contaminate the paint. It mixes it actually with starch, and it and the starch gets around the color, and it won't let it stick to paper. It's like an insulated wire; it won't conduct. It won't mm -hmm. stick. So you always run the risk of that, and I did on that one. Back, it's it's not fuzzy. Actually, it, it worked. The greens a little fuzzy, but that's pretty sharp. Those lines are pretty sharp, which is good because it's mm -hmm. not really the weather's good for marbling today. I can't take credit for that. It's the weather. <laughs> so. You don't you don't want to actually before a storm's the best time. It's the uh, atmosphere is charged, and you'll talk to ladies that do spinning and, and dyeing, and they say red sticks best before a storm. Uh, and if it's cold before a storm, it's even better. So today's okay. I can, I'm happy. <laughs> How long you been doing marble? Oh, 21 years. Really? Just long enough to start to understand it. Now I'm starting uh, to learn something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 